Welcome to Electron Line. Here's the second method by which we can calculate a total force on a dam. Here's the dam. It is 30 meters wide. The water depth is 8 meters. The dam is slanted at an angle of 30 degrees relative to the vertical. And if the height of the water is 8 meters, then the slanted slope of the dam, called L, can be calculated using the cosine of 30 degrees. Therefore, L is 9.24 meters. So what is the total force on that slanted portion of the dam? Using Pascal's principle, we know that the pressure will be acting in all directions at any particular depth. So if we go down at a depth of y below the surface, we can say that at this depth, the pressure is equal to rho times g times h, or y. In this case, let's just use y. So if the pressure at that point is rho g y, then we can calculate the force on that small little strip if we look over here, this is the slanted portion of the dam. Here's our small little DL, and we have that strip here. So we can actually calculate the force acting on that strip. The force, or we could say that the pressure by definition is equal to force divided by area, which means that the force is equal to the pressure times the area. So the force on that small little strip, let's call that a DF, a small amount of force, DF, and that is equal to the pressure at that depth called P times the area, in this case a small amount of area is dA. Now the, the force, dF, cannot be written as the pressure, which is rho g times the depth y, times dA. Now dA is going to be equal to W times dL. Now notice we have two variables here. We have the variable y and we have the variable L. So we cannot integrate that yet because we need to have a common variable we can go, we can convert from y to l using this particular equation. Uh, in this case, we can say that, uh, let's go ahead and use this relationship. We can say that the cosine of 30 degrees is equal to the depth y divided by, let's call it l. l being the distance down from the surface in this direction. Let's call it a little l, and let's call that a small little dl, where the total length we'll call it capital L so we don't confuse the variables. Let's do that. In this case, we can say that L is equal to Y divided by the cosine of 30 degrees, or Y is equal to L times the cosine of 30 degrees. So let's go ahead and plug that in for Y here. So we can write Y equals to L times the cosine of 30 degrees, and the F now becomes rho G. Instead of Y, we write the cosine of 30 degrees times L times W times DL. And now if we want to find the total force, F, that'll be the integral of all the little DFs, integrating from L equals zero to L equal, the total distance will now be 9.24 meters. 9.24, this is then the integral of, actually let me take out all the non-variables. That's the density times G, times the cosine of 30 degrees, times W, W is the width, that's also a constant, times the integral of L times DL, going from zero to 9.24. Now we can go ahead and integrate that. Let's come up here for a little bit more room. The force is equal to rho G times the cosine of 30 degrees, times W, times if we integrate L dl, we get L squared divided by 2. L squared divided by 2, and we're going to integrate that from 0 to L, L being 9.24 meters. Is that right? Yes, it is. So finally, we can say that F is equal to plugging in the upper limit and finding values for all these. The density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. G is 9.8, the cosine of 30 degrees. The width of the dam we said was 30 meters. And now we have L squared, L being 9.24, 9.24 quantity squared divided by 2. And that should give us the total force on the slanted portion of the dam. Let's see what that's equal to. 9,800, 9,800 times the cosine of 30 times 30 times 9.24 squared divided by 2 equals the total of 
eight, seven times 10 to the sixth, and the force would be in newtons. So a little bit over 10 million newtons of total force on that segment of the dam, or if the dam is 30 meters wide on the entire dam, that's a slanted portion. Notice that's a different result we would have gotten if the dam had been straight. If the dam had been straight, just for comparison, we can say that the force is equal to the average pressure times the area of the dam. If we had a straight face dam, the average pressure is the pressure at the halfway point. That would be rho g h divided by 2. That's the average pressure. And the area would be h times w. Plugging in the numbers for that, this would be equal to 1,000 times 9.8 times h squared, that would be 8 quantity squared, times w, which is 30, and the whole thing divided by 2. And let's see what that value would be in comparison. 800 0, 0, times 64 times 30 divided by 2 equals, and there we have, yes, that's it. That would be uh, equal to 9.41 times 10 to the 6th Newton, notice 9.4 million newtons, 10 point, almost 10.9 million newtons for comparison. So you can see that with a slanted dam, you have a greater total force, and this is one of the ways in which we can find out what that force is. That's method two. We have a couple more methods to show you coming up in the next videos.